any number of potential prey could venture past. Velvet isn't picky. She'll eat anything from rodents and birds to small antelope and monkeys. Drogo is an apex predator, and this is the perfect place for a midday ambush. Drogo is hardwired to kill, but he's not built to chase down a fleet-footed deer. He relies on his venom to deliver a slow-release assassination. He just needs to get close enough to deliver the blow. The deer has a window to drink his fill before Drogo reaches striking range. The deer lets down his guard. And it's the wrong move. All Drogo needs to secure his meal is one single bite. strike unleashes his venom ducts. As his teeth sink into the flesh, pressure on his gums forces toxic proteins through the ducts and up to the surface. The venom seeps into the bloodstream. It contains anticoagulants, which will stop the deer's blood from clotting. The victim limps off in shock. He's made a getaway, but his days are numbered. He will eventually bleed to death. Now all Drogo has to do is wait. And that's his strong suit. Above ground, dwarf crocs live by the rule of little and often. Snacking on frogs, fish, crustaceans, and insects. They adapt their diet to what's in season. What will it be today? Catfish. Lightning quick, he knows chasing them down would be fruitless. So he opts for plan B. Sit and wait. Let the fish come to you. He can hold his breath for over four hours. A flap of skin in the throat closes his windpipe so he doesn't drown.
sensory pits surround the jaw and along his sides detect tiny pressure changes in the water, allowing him to feel the movements of his prey. What the catfish thinks is a submerged log is actually a camouflaged killer. Crocs can't swallow underwater. He has to surface to eat. His highly acidic stomach will do the rest, able to break down flesh, scales, and bones. On an early October morning in the rolling woodlands of southern Indiana, a viper hides out in the leaf litter of autumn's past. She's got company, her offspring, born a few days ago. Unlike most snakes, Copperheads are born live rather than hatched from eggs and stay close to their mother at first. These two are the only survivors from a brood of six. The others have likely fallen victim to predators like hawks and owls. The snakelets are ready-made hunters themselves with a trick up their sleeve. Their yellow-tipped tail acts as a built-in lure resembling a caterpillar to attract unsuspecting frogs and lizards. Any day now, they'll leave their mother to fend for themselves. There's another hunter roaming the woods this morning. This female opossum has been out all night filling her belly with grubs and worms. Autumn is the time to fatten up. The first snow will fly within the next couple of months. Food will be much harder to come by. She's so focused on finding grubs, she runs right into the Copperhead family. Facing off with the snake is enough to send other animals running for their lives, but not the opossum. She's immune to the venom and has made a meal out of copperheads in the past. But a viper's bite is excruciating. She wisely takes a pass. Grubs are just as tasty, and they don't fight back. For the last two babies of the brood, sticking close to mom has paid off. Time to make tracks. Soon, she'll migrate to a winter den, leaving a scent trail for her young to follow. Together, they'll hibernate along with other species of snakes until spring's warmth lures them back into daylight. Komodo dragons are covered in a complex suit of armored scales with bony deposits for extra protection. To complete his suit of armor, he has long, hooked claws, part hoof, part nail, and they are perfect tools for plunder. His powerful muscular tail 
the length of his body is both a weapon and a rudder. Using their muscular tails, they glide through the water like a streamlined torpedo. They can swim up to a third of a mile away in search of food and mates. They have mastered their environment to keep a stronghold over this ruthless habitat. As the crocodiles work their way upstream towards the approaching herds of game, their most acute sense is activated. Smell. Located at the tip of their snout are two nostrils, each with a protective flap to seal them closed underwater. Only the tip of the snout needs to be above the surface for the animal to breathe normally. In effect, the crocodile has a built-in snorkel. Paul, one of the most intriguing things about these animals is how they breathe. These are the external nostrils. And as these animals come up to the surface, they go ahead and open up these valves and they start bringing air down through the skull here, down to the airway. But at the same time, there's a, a chamber here where they can sense smell as well. So what's interesting is, like, like most animals, they have two regions at the front of the brain that detect the odors in the air. And because there's two of them, they can tell whether the smell's coming from the left or the right or from straight in front. So they're picking up olfactory cues here, and that's going to travel back to the brain, which is right here. Basically, they're sampling the air as it's, as it's being breathed. Because these guys don't only hunt, they also scavenge quite a lot. So for scavenging, the sense of smell is very, very important. Dr. Erickson wants to expose the secret to the crocodile's incredible sense of smell, which is hidden deep within its skull. And it all starts here. The scent of the prey travels down into the nostrils and enters a large sensory chamber. This is where the crocodile can detect a variety of smells. The walls are lined with millions of receptors that are so sensitive they can detect both airborne odors and even water chemicals released by rotting flesh. Once filtered, the air continues down towards the lungs. The crocodile's sense of smell is so powerful, they can detect a rotting carcass from over four miles away, as well as the stench of thousands of approaching wildebeest and zebra. Weighing in at some 150 pounds, this alligator snapping turtle finds a calm spot. He earns his calories by becoming just another rock on the bottom. His special sense organs taste the presence of prey in the murky water. Just say, ah. to set the trap. The worm-shaped appendage on the tip of his tongue, called a vermiform, lures in a curious fish.
one wrong move could give him away. It's lunchtime in the Mississippi River. The alligator snapping turtle's incredible vice-like beak can tear through flesh and shatter bone. By late July, the egret chicks have begun to test their wings their parents won't support them much longer. But when you live above water, learning to fly is fraught with peril. The thick foliage that was perfect for nesting in is hazardous for an unsteady juvenile looking for a clear flight path. but the water beneath holds even greater dangers for these novice flyers. Cayman who endured the dry season entombed in mud, the fledging months of July and August are the boom that follows the bust. Young Cayman make the most of a seasonal bounty of small fish and aquatic insects. But once the reptiles grow over six feet long, their nine-inch jaws can feast on egret chicks. And there are plenty to go around. Nothing goes to waste. Another chick falls and is quickly spotted. The caiman is far more streamlined in the water than this tangle of wings and legs. With all the strength it can muster, the chick holds out to higher ground. just in time. The Chihuahuan Desert is great snake territory, full of blacktails, diamondbacks, and Mojave rattlers. Well, the only place we're going to find blacktails is up there. Rocks, yucca plants, cactus, heat. That's a bit of a hike. Always watch where you put in your hands. <laughs> Check this out. This is a mottled rattlesnake. They live all over the place here, but look how camouflaged they are. The same color rock, little shadows. He's quite an old one. This is a full-grown specimen. Just gonna just lift you up here. Not gonna bother you, buddy. There we are. Rule number one, always use your stick. Look at that, a pink belly. What a pretty snake, man. That's my first one. The model rock rattler is synonymous with these treacherous outcrops. Only two feet in length when fully grown, 
Its grayish pink scales blend seamlessly into the cliffs and boulders it calls home. There are more surprises to come. Easy, 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 easy. Get me a fright. Don't do that. Come here, out you come. There we go. Wow. That is a black-tailed rattlesnake. Look at that. Black tail, little black nose. How cute is that? This is the first one I've ever seen in the wild. Jules is on a roll. His second new species in a matter of minutes. This is exactly the environment they live in. It's about 5,000 feet high elevation, really cold nights, very hot days like today. Black tails are easy to distinguish from the western diamondback. Their yellowish scales and darker diamonds blend perfectly with the leaves and shadows of the yucca plant. And he's eating pocket mice all over the place here. Little pocket mice, little tiny mice. He's also hunted by raptors, birds of prey. They live on these rocks too. So he lives under stuff like this, which will really rip you up. So he's a little defensive. Very lucky to find one. I'm gonna put you back in there, buddy. No bird of prey is gonna get you today. Look at that. <laughs> that is gorgeous. Look at that guy. Okay, go on then, back you go. Go hide under there, man. Wow, that's fantastic. Tens of thousands of red-billed quelia take to the air. They are the most numerous birds on Earth, 10 billion strong. At under an ounce each, they may not be heavyweights, but the flock's combined weight is more than a buffalo. Having stretched their wings, they settle down to drink. A young crocodile would bother with such small prey. It will be decades before this one grows into the river's apex predator. This huge crocodile could live for a hundred years and will never stop growing. He might end up over 20 feet long. And the Luangua River is full of these giants. Here, more are found than anywhere else in Zambia. Nile crocodiles are the only predator in Africa to weigh more than a ton. They're Luangwa's final heavyweight. These reptilian giants are so successful, they have barely changed in over 200 million years. Dragon tactics are stealth not speed. Drogo has a foolproof navigation system. His long forked tongue is a highly specialized meal-seeking device which directs him towards his target. The tips of his tongue sample the air and collect scent particles. Every time he retracts it, his tongue disperses the particles onto the Jacobson's organ where the scent is analyzed. The tongue tips also tell him the direction of his prey. More particles on the right tip means the prey is to the right, and vice versa. 
simple and effective. By swinging his head left to right, he can sample large quantities of air and taste a carcass up to two and a half miles away. Unlike birds and mammals, crocodiles rely on their environment to maintain an optimal body temperature of around 89 degrees Fahrenheit. They bask in the sun to warm up, but must be careful not to overheat. The temperature is now nudging 100 degrees. Opening their mouths, known as gaping, helps dissipate heat. But when it gets really hot, the only way to cool off is to get in the water. When everything's desperate to drink, a river full of crocodiles is a recipe for disaster. disposition keeps them safe this time. They never drop their guard when drinking or give the croc a chance to strike. But these reptiles are not only hunters. They're scavengers too. Crocodile brains have large olfactory lobes for processing odors and they can smell a carcass several hundred yards away. A puku has succumbed to the stress of the dry season. Despite their numbers, the vultures are no match for a hungry croc. A male puku, even a partially eaten one, can weigh over 130 pounds. But it's not a problem for even this relatively small crocodile. He's got his lunch after all. Any number of potential prey could venture past. Velvet isn't picky. She'll eat anything from rodents and birds to small antelope and monkeys. Slight miscalculation makes no difference. Once she's set her sights on a target, there's no chance for escape. Her strike isn't the fastest in the snake world, 
but at over 20 feet per second, it does the job. The shock of the attack stuns the bird, while the complex venom cocktail rapidly floods its body. As she waits for her prey to die, Velvet adjusts her fangs. They can really get in the way sometimes. Within 10 minutes, it's all over and lunch is ready. Eating is a specialized process. Velvet unhinges her jaw to allow her to open her mouth wide enough. Using rows of teeth to latch on, she drags her prey to a safe place where she can eat in peace. 